So we're down in the Wicklow Mountains at the minute and we're heading to one of Ireland's most ancient sites. It's Glendalough, so there's a monastery down there um, on the lake side and it's it's one of the most beautiful sites probably in the world actually. It's, it's one of the uh, world heritage sites. So the most famous aspect I think um, of Glendalough um, other than obviously the, the stunning natural beauty is the round tower. So um, the round tower on the actual monastic site itself was uh, built in the 6th century by St. Kevin and his monks. Um, it's gone through a lot of changes throughout history and it's been the site of uh, Holy See with bishops and um, various different monks throughout history. And there's been Viking raids on the site, um, raids from other parties that were, were invading that time and obviously all their clans that were, were not Christian. Um, so it was, it was a tour, it had, it's had a torrid history over the years, um, but now it's, it's a huge tourist site at the minute um, and it's it's got a visitor centre you can go to, it's got lots of great sort of walking trails and stuff, lovely villages to pass through when you're going here, okay? So if you do want to sort of know roughly where it is, um, there's a big, biggish town called Greystones and Bray, they're just south of Dublin, um, about I think 15, 20 kilometres south of Dublin. Um, and you just head about half an hour into the Wicklow Mountains and you're at Glen Lock. But yeah, I'm going to take you there today. I've got my trusty driver here, Tina. Chauffeur me as usual until I get my license. And uh, yeah, until the end of the <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're driving through some lovely um, uh, southern towns at the minute. And yeah, we'll take you there and enjoy. So up ahead is the visitor centre. There's a huge car park here as well. It's uh, at the time of the filament here, it's uh, four euro per car. And you can give that against the price of the actual entrance to the visitor centre too. And I don't know if you can <laughs> see it from here, but through those trees is uh, where the actual land tower is not that far. So obviously we're still in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. So the visitor centre at the moment is closed. I'm assuming it will open again in the future. Uh, hopefully when this thing uh, blows over. Closed. You will be glad to know the toilets are still open, even during this time, okay? So, um, there is social distance in place, but the toilets are open so you don't have to pee in the lake. So here we are, coming up to the monastic city. You can see the round tower there, a the little church beside it. This is one of the churches in the monastic city. And then the famous round tower is just up that hill there. There's a little graveyard around the place too. I don't know how old some of these graves are, some of them seem pretty new though. So, I assume you can still be buried here until recently. So judging by this plaque here, these structures here were 12th century, tower, 6th century. So I'm not sure what that little church is, but it looks like in the same era as the actual round tower itself. Don't want to be taking too many pictures around the graveyard, don't feel comfortable doing that. Um, but look at that view. Incredible looking. Here is the famous round tower, 33 meters high, built in the 6th century as I said by St. Kevin and his monks. It's still standing strong today. I think they had to replace the um, actual roof of it, but uh, the rest of the structure is original and I find that I was completely wrong with my information by the way. I'm so sorry about that, but online I was reading some stuff, I mean what I like to do, we had a research board. I was talking to Maureen, going up to the, the tour guards around here, lovely lady, by the way, hello Maureen, if anybody knows her, she's doing this, um, but uh, she knew so much about the site. So the Roman Tower itself was uh, made between the 10th and the 12th century, and the site actually founded by St. Kevin, is down at Humber Lake, okay, but that, none of the actual original structures sort of remain because they're all made of wood and straw, so they don't seem to run away over the years. Um, he actually went down there to become a hermit, um, he lived in a cave down there, okay, on his own for years, and then he got a bit of a following like many holy men do, and then they sort of found the site over here. This major side here was the 10th century, so I'm gonna say it's a bit, a bit younger, like it's a thousand years old. It's just not over. Isn't this just beautiful? Honestly, like if you're not from Ireland, like you really gotta get over here. I'm always amazed at how beautiful our country is. Mm -hmm. 
fun fact, the egg shop, some of uh, the Braveheart film, Mel Gibson classic, uh, in Wicklow. And you can sort of see why. I mean, like the woodland stuff, that's very medieval, sort of brave-hearted Lord of the Rings sort of thing. So, um, pretty cool. We're walking through the, the trail here. There's lots of different trails, um, different energy levels. We had a few pints last night, so we're taking sort of the medium level one, which is the pink trail. Um, you can go to orange one, which is like a ramble, and then there's like another one too, which takes you away up the mountains. And to be honest with you, I couldn't be arsed today. But there's time just everywhere. Okay, so you can see this. Um, this is the uh, route I was talking about, so that you get the colour coded ones in the map near the visitor centre that way. Um, there is a cafe, I believe, by the Upper Lake as well, so that's where we're headed now. So we're heading down to around Upper Lake now. Um, that's the Lower Lake we're at before. We took two shots. Uh, there is a visitor centre sort of info office just up there. You'll see it as you come off the trail. Um, and then there's toilets down by the car park bit of it too. So I'm um, just waiting for Tina here and then we're going to go on a wee ramble. So some food trucks here as well, we're only going to be by to eat. Um, I think usually in the visitor centre there might be some food there, but it's closed at the minute, so this is what's available. We grow over in Ireland, even though it's pissing down the rain, in the cold of winter, or any time else, there's always room for a bit of an ice cream. So in Belfast we call these pokes, because it's pokey. So they do, you're, these are Bally Castle, sort of north coast. Belfast we call it pokes, down south of things just would be ice cream. Yeah, they're delicious. Enjoying yourself there? Mm -hmm. Yeah? And we got uh, curry chips as well. Another UK and Irish sort of delicacy. Um, cheesy curry chip too. For all you people from not not from Ireland, you may not get this, but it tastes absolutely delicious. Here they are. There's the curry chip. That's the curry cheese chip. I mean, come on. Even if you've never really tried that before, does that not look great to you? Cheese stretch, melted cheese, curry sauce, amazing. Coming up to the upper lake here. Look at that for a view. Beautiful. So behind me here is the upper lake. Absolutely looks like something like Jurassic Park. Um, basically this is where uh, St. Kevin came down and the party around these mountains here. He actually became a hermit in a cave. And as I said earlier, got a lot of followers. They followed him down here but this is what he would have sort of be where he would have been living around the 6th century, okay, it's around 500 400 years ago. I don't know if you can hear me, it's pretty windy here because I'm going to mount this lake, but look at that for a view. Absolutely incredible. We've stumbled on this little room here. I say stumble, stumble. It's off the main path. So it looks pretty old, so I'm gonna go explore. I love the wee sites like this all over the whole trail, so keep a, an eye out for them when you're on your way. So, this is a little early Christian church. They think it was built in the 11th century. It's still looking pretty well, there's no roof, obviously, but. I don't know. Oh, there's a little prayer sites here. Leave we offering too. That looks like where maybe the tabernacle and stuff was. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff now, like, but it does look like it. Pretty cool. They decided to take the medium strenuous route, the pink route, so here's the wee signs. Went up to see the pool in this waterfall. So let's see what that's like. And being in Ireland, it's absolutely pissing down now, as you can see. So, oops, <laughs> this is the waterfall. I'm not sure we're debating whether or not the new plant come up there. It's very steep. Right? This is steep enough, okay, just for any just uh, wondering how strenuous the hike is. It's, it's a reasonable hike, you know. And I'm just going to be fine difficulty with it sort of thing, but lovely waterfall. So, we went up, we went actually quite high to the top of that big staircase. I'm around the corner, asked the fella how much further to the other viewpoint, he said about 45 minutes to an hour. So, yeah, we had a lot of pints last night. Yeah, and had I had a lot of pints last night. Then had a wee gym and a few weeks out here and there. But yeah, it's quite a walk and 
we it's quite late in the day now. We've dinner to get to tonight, so we didn't go for that, but and apparently it is worth it. Um it's lashing down now like so to be honest I don't think we'll be able to see much over the lake. But if it's a nice clear day and you're not dying like us, I definitely would recommend going up there because I saw some of the pictures online and it's beautiful. But now to the car and I get some dinner tonight. That's us into the car, drying off now. Um, just uh, down the road from Glen de Lac, on our way back to our tiny house. Uh, we've got this house, it's outside Dalgany, which is like a suburb of the Greystones. Good position, it's a, it's a wee bit far out um, in terms of walking distance from a lot of places. You can't drive to it very easily, but above the accommodation, it's called Tall Trees. If you want to see more about it, it's in the description below. Uh, but otherwise, hope you enjoyed this video of Glen de Lac. Uh, we didn't get to see everywhere around the whole place. Uh, it would take probably two days to get around the whole site, but I mean, you can sort of do a trail and see you know, most of the major sites within a six hour or seven hour period, okay? So, but definitely come and see it if you're around the area and uh, explore around the Woodland Mountains because it's a beautiful part of the world. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure you like and subscribe to this video if you can and stay tuned for more videos in the future. See you later.